So at this point, we've now learned what makes something living versus not living, and then talked a little bit about how that discovery came to be of what is it that makes up a living thing. So our next unit is going to be all about how is that organism organized and what makes up a specialized cell? What is it that makes a cell specialized? So the first thing we're going to look at is just to know that in order for something to be organized, it is made up of one or more cells. So all living things are organized and they're made up of one or more cells. So some things are made up of just one cell and that one cell is made up of cell parts, which we will spend some time on later in the unit. And those cell parts are made up of molecules, which again, we will learn more about. But molecules are not living thing. A cell organelle is not yet considered a living thing. But when these molecules build together to make organelles, and then organelles, different types of organelles get put together into what's called a cell, now we're at the layer of having a living thing. So cells can either be an entire organism in themselves, or if you have a multi-celled organism, they build together to make tissues, and then those special tissues build together to make organs like your stomach, and then those organs build together to make an organ system, maybe your digestive system, and then those systems, a whole bunch of different systems, build together to make an organism. Later on in the semester, we will learn about how those organisms are also part of another system of organization where the organism is one part of a population, a whole bunch of that same organism put together, and then a population is part of a community, which is a bunch of populations all in the same space at the same time, and those communities are all put together to make ecosystems and eventually the whole planet. So that's where we will end our semester, and we're starting out our semester way back here with this bottom um, square, rectangle, all about an organism and inside the organism, what is it made of? So let's start with what is a cell? A cell is the smallest unit of life. Once you go inside that cell, we're talking about cell parts, which are not considered living, but we will be getting into what those cell parts are and what they do um, and how they allow for each organism to be a living thing later in the same unit. So the cell theory, we talked briefly about this, but a reminder that the cell theory is a scientific theory that is a description about why or how things in the natural uh, work in the natural world. Um, it's a scientific theory that describe how cells work. So how do we have them and how do they work? So there's three parts. The first part, all living things are made up of one or more cells. So there's unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. Um, and then those cells are the smallest unit of life. So cells are made up of atoms and molecules but atoms and molecules are not living things. So the smallest thing that is considered living is a cell. And then going back to part one, those smallest units of life, those cells, can be put together either as unicellular or multicellular organisms to build all living things. And part three is that all new cells come from pre-existing cells. So cells divide through a process called mitosis, and when they divide, they make new cells, and those new cells either make a new organism, or they make new parts of an organism, like new parts of a tissue, um, which build into organs, which build into organisms. So our three parts to the cell theory is that we know that all living things are made of cells, that those cells are the smallest part of life, that are still considered living, and that those cells came from pre-existing cells. So you have to have a cell in order to get a new cell. Um, but do all cells look the same? They don't. They don't look the same. So when we're talking about multicellular organisms that reproduce 
sexually, so with two parents. We will use humans as their example. Um, we start as a fertilized egg, and that fertilized egg divides into a bunch of cells that are all identical to each other. They got their information partly from the egg and partly from the sperm. When those two came together, we get a whole bunch of, eventually, uh, cells that are identical to one another. And at one point in the development, the there's a chemical signal that's triggered that says, hey, cells, you guys are going to become nerve cells. And then a different trigger signals and says, you guys are going to become red blood cells. And another trigger signals, it says, you guys are going to be bone cells and you guys are going to be muscle cells. And that keeps going on and on as development happens until you end up with an entire human that has nerve cells and red blood cells and bone cells and muscle cells all put together into the shapes of the heart and blood vessels and a stomach and a brain and a skeleton. So multicellular organisms have specialized cells. Each of these is an example of a specialized cell, which have specific jobs that perform specific tasks. So a nerve cell has a specific job. A red blood cell has a different specific job from a bone cell, which has another different specific job, and so on. So we'll start with red blood cell. We'll look at what is its job. So red blood cells look like this. They're tiny little red discs that float through your bloodstream, uh, through your blood vessels, and they carry oxygen and carbon dioxide through the body. So the oxygen and carbon dioxide actually stick to the surface of the red blood cell, and that's how that oxygen can be delivered out to your cells so your cells can survive. And then those cells give the red blood cells back carbon dioxide, which is then carried to your lungs so that it can exit your body. White blood cells also float through your bloodstream, so through your blood vessels, but they have a different job. Their specific job is when they see um, pathogen, so that's something that shouldn't be in your blood, a foreign invader. When they see something that shouldn't be there, like a virus or a bacteria, something that could make you sick or harm you, they will actually attack it and attempt to keep you healthy. So another way to try and maintain homeostasis is your white blood cells will help fight disease. Bone cells have more than one specific job. They actually have several jobs. The main one that we're aware of and that we're more familiar with is that they help us keep our shape and support. Um, so they keep us from being a pile of mush on the ground but they also help us move. They are connected to our muscles, which allow us to be able to walk and raise our arm and talk. They protect our internal organs. If you think about your rib cage is probably the most obvious one. It's protecting all your organs, like your heart underneath. And they actually store certain minerals like calcium. You knew that calcium was good for your bones, but they store that calcium to be used later for your body. And then muscle cells. Muscle cells help the organism move. So we have different types of muscle cells, skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. Um, when we talk about helping the organism move, we're talking about skeletal muscles, which again are attached to your bones, skeleton, bones, that's how I remember the name, skeletal muscle, and they help us walk and help us raise our hand again. And a nerve cell. So a nerve cell's job is to send and receive information. So the technical way of saying it is that they help an organism carry messages from one part of the body to another. So you put your hand on a hot stove, the message is going to travel up to your brain that says, oh, wow, that's really hot. And then it'll send a message back down to your muscles and cause you to move your arm. So they carry mess messages throughout your body. And then finally, a skin cell. So skin cells also have several jobs. Uh, the one that we are the most familiar with is that they're there to protect us. They keep things that are supposed to be on the outside out, like germs. So bacteria and viruses can't just travel right through your skin. They have to find an opening to get in. Um, if you didn't have your skin, all of those things would be able to enter your body without any trouble. They also, your skin also produces vitamin D, which is a super important vitamin for your body to be able to function. So multicellular organisms have all of those specialized cells, but unicellular organisms do not. So sometimes people say, well, why don't they have specialized cells? 
Well, unicellular organisms are made of just one cell. And so if you only have one cell, they can't specialize. They can't have one specific job, like a blood cell to carry oxygen. Because if it was only doing that job, it wouldn't be able to function. It wouldn't be able to do what it needs to do. So when I'm only a single-celled organism, I have to do all the jobs in one. So I can't usually do as many jobs, but my one individual cell like this one here or this one here, needs to be able to transport nutrients. If I'm a moving one-celled organism, it also needs to be able to move my body and allow things to travel in, the, in and out of the cell. So a cell is the smallest unit of life, again, and a tissue then is what is cells make up. So when we have a multicellular organism, we also have levels within that organism. So the cell, again, the smallest unit of life, and those cells get put together to build a tissue. So tissues are a group of similar types of cells that work together to carry out specific tasks. Um, those tasks might be the job of our skin protecting us or the job of our muscles to keep things out but they're going to keep or do a specific task. Those tissues build together to build organs. Um, so different tissues that work together to make a, do a particular job is called an organ. So this is an example of a stomach that is made of multiple different tissues as well as some others. And when those tissues work together, they do the job of your stomach. So I might have nerve tissue and smooth muscle tissue and connective tissue and skin tissue and I'm going to have blood tissue. And when they all come together, they work to do the job of digesting your food. So those organs then build together to make organ systems like the digestive system. So an organ system is a whole group of different organs like your small intestine, your large intestine, um, your stomach, your liver, your gallbladder, your pancreas, your esophagus, your mouth, your glands, they all work together in order to digest your food and allow your body to absorb nutrients. And when you put those all together, all the different systems of your body, and these are just six of them that we'll focus more on later in the year, but all of those systems put together make the organism. And so when that organism has all the characteristics of life, now it's called a living thing. So all the characteristics of life work because of the organ systems working together to make the organism do its job.